Welcome to Open Source Spotlight. We invite open source authors and ask them to show the tools they're working on. Today we have Stefan and Elijah. Hi, tell us a few words about yourself and about the tool you want to show us. Cool, so hi, I'm Stefan, CEO of Dagworks. Hey, Elijah, CTO of Dagworks. Yeah. So uh, prior to Dagworks, uh, Elijah and I work at a company called Stitchfix, uh, where we were essentially building the self-service platform, uh, machine learning platform for over 100 data scientists. Today, we're going to walk you through Hamilton, uh, which is something that we both co-created uh, and subsequently open sourced while we're still at Stitchfix. Um, but we started Dagworks and because we believe you know Hamilton can help everyone scale and maintain their model uh, pipeline efforts, because now everyone is a software engineer by training. Uh, what is Hamilton? What does it do? Yeah, um, so yeah, uh, good question. So at a high level, uh, Hamilton is a scalable general purpose micro framework for defining data flows. So uh, a lot of words to effectively say, uh, the problem that you know Hamilton's really trying to help solve is the one where uh, your co colleague leaves and you have to inherit their work. Uh, and you're probably terrified of it because most people in the data world don't have too much of a, a software engineering background by training. Uh, you know, it's, it's common trope is you know, data scientists, machine learning code isn't well structured. And so Hamilton is an opinionated paradigm for you to write Python code that helps standardize and structure and bring more structure and clarity um, to uh, your, your your data work. Um, so it started from uh, at Stitchfix, where a team was essentially doing uh, uh, feature engineering and uh, time series feature engineering, building uh, forecasts, and effectively they were kind of falling over there, uh, tripping up over themselves with the code that they had written. We created Hamilton uh, to um, help uh, solve a bunch, of, a bunch of their pain points. Yeah, that's uh, pretty exciting. So I want to see the demo. Yeah, cool. So, Ham uh, so Hamilton is open source. You can find it under you know, Dagworks slash Hamilton. Uh, the, uh, because it's a paradigm, meaning it's a different way of writing code, I'm just going to walk you through just a little bit of uh, just high level overview before showing the demo. Um, uh, so the basic premise with Hamilton is instead of writing uh, procedural code, so in the case of say you're creating a pandas data frame and you want to create a column, uh, you would normally do this kind of uh, you know procedural kind of assignment operation. With Hamilton, instead, you rewrite everything as a function. Now, um, I'm going to make my text a little bigger, right? Um, so uh, if you're creating a column called C and you're summing it from A and columns A and B, instead with Hamilton, you would write a function with a name is the name of that column, and the input arguments declare what's required uh, for input. Uh, you then have a nice separate place for a doc string, but then you know, the logic goes there. Now, you don't run this code. Um, uh, you need a, a what, what we call a driver, but effectively the aha moment uh, with Hamilton was how can we as easily uh, enable someone to go from an output, so go from a, a, a table uh, that you have kind of created back to uh, you know the code as quickly as possible, while also making it maintainable and manageable. So hopefully in the next couple of minutes we'll kind of uh, clarify uh, that a bit, but at a high level, effectively with Hamilton instead of writing uh, you know a procedural code. You're writing things as functions. So, uh, so to, to, to hammer, hammer that home a little bit, I'm just going to show you a little bit of you know uh, the old way of writing code, right? So here we have a basic ETL script where you're loading some data, doing some Python transforms, and then uh, you know loading it or in this case printing. Um, with Hamilton, as again the the idea was, how can we easily map the inputs to um, uh, to, to uh, so the outputs to to code? Here in this example, it's obviously pretty trivial, but you know, in the real world, you know, things that get a little bit more complex. So, rather than writing procedural code like this, you rewrite everything uh, as functions, right? And so, just to kind of belabor the point a little bit, a little bit, you know, spend per sign up here is defined as spend over over signups, right? With Hamilton. Uh, you write a function where the function name is spent per sign what up. What are the advantages yeah. of doing it this way? So what I see now mm. is just a lot more code than previously. Yes, good, good question, Alexi. Uh, um, good observation. Um, yeah, so this this code is more verbose, right? Um, but we see, a, a, you know, verbosity is an advantage since you read code more often than you write it. Um, and so if you want to, uh, uh, you know, inherit something from someone, or, or in terms of just in general maintainability. This code is great for like being terse and concise and you know just getting something up but like for maintenance it's actually um uh you know it, it's hard uh where do you do where do you put your unit testing uh how do you do integration testing well um what about documentation so if there's something interesting that you need a document like this uh, in a script form doesn't really have that or it's functions you always have the function body uh and because with hamilton you're actually forced to curate functions outside of uh where you run it 
this code is reusable from day one. You're forced to you're forced to make code you're reusable from the from the beginning. Whereas with here, if I wanted to create a new script or reuse something, I'm probably going to cut and paste it rather than spend the time uh, refactoring. In which case, I'm going to propagate um, uh, or you know all, all those issues that come with that. Elijah, anything else? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you got it. I think it's really the point about it being more read, the code being read more than it than it's written makes verbosity not sort of the end of the world. Um, but also, I think in this case is an example more to show how it works. But when you have thousands and thousands of functions, there are thousands and thousands of columns in your data frame, it can get really, really messy. And that's where this sort of shines, right? So as you scale up in complexity, uh, this ends up helping, but it also works at the sort of small scale as well. So you don't have to be a thousands of columns of scale, but you know, um, uh, it's a uh, great. So it, because it, uh, this code is always unit testable, right? Uh, there's also a very nice uh, integration testing story, but then there's also a very nice modification story because it's very easy to understand. Uh, you know, if you make a modification to a code and you have to do a pull request, uh, what you're going to be impacting. Um, so just to close the loop on like on kind of the hello world, right, with Hamilton. So rather than writing uh, code that kind of looks like this, you write rewrite things as functions. You don't run those functions directly. Uh, you need to write uh, um, some driver code. Now, uh, I forgot to mention that this website that we're on, tryhamilton.dev, uh, runs Python in the browser, uses Pyodide, so you don't need to install anything. Um, and so th this is what I'm kind of using the demo. But effectively, um, uh, uh, with Hamilton, you construct uh, a, 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 a what we call a driver up, uh, which takes in a uh, the, the functions module, crawls the functions, uh, and then you can kind of request what you want computed from it. And then Hamilton will go ahead and figure out how to compute it from the way the functions are defined. Um, uh, and so I'll show that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I um, uh, more graphically with Hamilton out of the box, you can kind of uh, you know these functions effectively. Uh, create a, a directed acyclic graph, and it's very easy for you to kind of visualize uh, 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 what is actually being executed. So, um, just to kind of uh, yeah, so this is code that looks uh, similarly. I edited it uh, slightly, um, but one of the nice things with Hamilton is like, say you want to create a um, uh, let's see, we yeah, we, we want to add something to it. So we're going to uh, take create a uh, this is this is. Uh, Right now, this is creating, say, a, a pandas data frame. Uh, and say, uh, we actually want to model our full model pipeline with it. Uh, with Hamilton, you can also do that. So it's not only just for creating, um, you can say, pandas data frames. Uh, that's where kind of Hamilton's roots uh, come from. Instead, we can actually uh, you know, very easily extend this to do uh, a, a full um, uh, model pipeline if we wanted to. So here I just added in a, a function, which, uh, you know, uh, I have, uh, it's going to take in three, three columns. Um, and so if I, I just need to declare them as inputs to my function, right, uh, then I'm, you know, doing some logic here, something very naive here, uh, just, you know, creating a, a data frame from them. Um, and then what you do, if you, if you, if I want Hamilton now to recognize and understand um, uh, that, uh, this this new function kind of exists. All I need to do is, uh, you know, change uh, the output that I kind of want requested. Um, so I can actually, so I'm just going to uh, comment out uh, this line and then add in, you know, the name of uh, the output here, which is training set. Um, and so when I go to run it, um, Hamilton knows that if it's only getting a data frame, one, one data frame out, it will kind of do it. But uh, you can kind of see, uh, I don't know if it was, it was clear before, but uh, we now have added a new node uh, to our kind of uh, directed graph of, of execution. You don't um, need to specify like all the all the steps, just the final one, right? And then it figures out what exactly it needs to execute to get there, right? Correct. Yeah, it's that's all, it's exactly all... the power of breaking it up into multiple pieces, right? Um, so this is what you get with that additional verbosity is you get to execute just sort of one path or you get to add one little piece without thinking about how the rest of it works. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So you can it, it, to, just to hammer home the point. It knew that um, to create training set, uh, it, it needed signups average through expand and spend serum in unit variants. The way the framework then figures it out, it looks for a function with these the uh, you know that corresponds to the, the the function argument name, right? And so it then that's how it can kind of uh, you know build its kind of a graph of execution. And if it's not there, it expects it as input. Right, and so signups and spend uh, are both kind of uh, inputs that we provide uh, uh, to the DAG um, as they aren't de uh, defined as functions. 
Um, and so uh, just to show you some, some more code. So if I just want to, um, you know, now, now I've created my training set, I want to create a model, right? All I need to do is write a function, again, declare its inputs, right? Um, now uh, here I'm going to, uh, you know, and you can get, uh, so uh, let's see, we want, uh, uh, say I want to get the training set and the model back. Um, right now, by default, Hamilton, um, you know, it, it's focused on creating a pandas data frame. So it will try to uh, shoehorn uh, whatever uh, re response types you get. And so sometimes, uh, depending on what, it will, it, will, it will break. But in this case, since it's an object, it will just actually stick it in as a data frame. I don't want that. Um, I actually want to um, uh, say get out, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, them as uh, I, I want to get a dictionary back as a result instead. And so one of the things that with Hamilton you can kind of do is uh, uh, we just need to uh, tell Hamilton that, hey, we want to kind of slightly adapt how the graph is being walked. Um, and so uh, here I've just added to the driver instantiation uh, what we call an instantiated an adapter. And the basic, um, um, and what it's actually doing is, is a simple Python graph adapter, but it's taking in a diction, it's, it's saying, I, hey, I want to return a dictionary as, as a result. So now uh, when I run this, I got to change uh, this line of code. Um, uh, we should see that, uh, you know, uh, the graph hasn't changed, but uh, we now, you can kind of see we, we're having a, a, a a dictionary returned as a result. And so um, I have uh, my model object. So this is one way that you can uh, run uh, you could, uh, anything that you kind of want with Hamilton. Uh, you can get, uh, you know, we have, um, uh, if you want to do feature engineering, very that's one one place that people start with. But otherwise, if you want to model your full uh, model pipeline, you can. So um, uh, otherwise, I don't know. Any clarification questions there, Alexi, I have can go into the more some more advanced syntactic sugar things that Hamilton can kind of do to help route. Well, when I was looking at this, I'm one, I was wondering, so okay, probably it executes things locally, but there's also potential to execute it somehow in a distributed mode, right? Is this uh, what Hamilton is already doing? Yeah, so Hamilton is, you can think of it as, uh, it's, it's trying to be pretty agnostic to, uh, and it wants to help you run wherever, you know, you, you run Python code. Um, so this driver code, you know, you can run it within, uh, any, anyone that runs Python. So it could be within a web service, it could be a Jupyter notebook, it could be within your, your airflow task. Now, your question was more, can you, can I distribute the computation? Um, and uh, the answer is yes. So um, any framework uh, such as kind of Ray or Dask, where you would kind of, you know, annotate a function with like Ray remote or kind of Dask.delayed, uh, Hamilton can actually inject that as we're walking um, uh, 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 the graph. And so, um, we have some, uh, we have a Ray and a Dask graph adapter. We also have a Pandas on Spark uh, graph adapter. And so effectively the only code you need to change to get this to run on Ray or Dask is to uh, swap out the, the the adapter. And so we have examples there on the repo that can kind of show you that. But um, there, are, there are some caveats there, in which case, you know, you got to make sure that the computation that's happening uh, within the functions is, you know, uh, outweighs the serialization costs between processes. But otherwise, yes, you can, you can scale computation out. So to summarize what you said, in order to parallelize it, I need to add, add a bunch of annotations to the functions and then change. Um, I, like no, 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 no annotations needed. No annotations needed. Okay. You, just, you just need to change. Uh, yeah, the the, uh, the you could say an adapter that tells Hamilton how to augment uh, uh, walking the walking the deck. The cool thing is, as the framework Hamilton breaks it all, like it's all broken into functions, the framework itself can actually add any of these annotations or sort of be smart about that. Yeah, that's what I would expect. Just wanted to double check. Yep. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. So the um, <clears throat> now to, to, to the question on verbosity, we do have um, uh, you know some advanced usage, right? And so what we we do actually have decorators that you can decorate Hamilton with. Um, so a common thing in in code is actually to have if statements or if else statements with Hamilton. You can actually uh, split out uh, things by function, so you can have uh, conditional functions that. Uh, get brought into the DAG based on some sort of uh, configuration passed in. Um, so here, for example, we have uh, two implementations of acquisition cost rolling mean. One is you know, long and one is short. Um, and so uh, uh, which one gets included in the DAG? Well, depends on the config passed in. And so this is where when you can instantiate a driver, you can also pass in config that helps resolve uh, the DAG to kind of figure out which node to kind of include. Um, so this is great for helping split apart and not having to keep uh, you know, 
a context when you're going through if else statements uh, in people's code, you can actually you know separate that out, out more cleanly with Hamilton and, and therefore much easier unit testing strategy as well. You don't have to, you know, it's very clear uh, as to as to what you want to test. Um, in terms of uh, we also have the ability to parameterize nodes. So uh, rather than uh, verbosely writing things out, we can actually give you this kind of for loop to create a bunch of um, you know. Uh, 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 Python nodes or, or, or functions, right? And so in this case here, so you're, it's doing, you know, uh, creating acquisition cost rolling mean based off of um, different uh, windows. Uh, and then uh, we also have runtime data quality checks. Uh, so uh, one of the, the, if you really want just pass fail or when when something runs with Hamilton, you have the ability to add a function um, and, uh, you know, when it runs, Hamilton will kind of check the output based on the expectations there. Uh, we uh, integrate with Pandera. We also have its very uh, pluggable um, uh, uh, way that you can kind of implement your own if you wanted to. Uh, reach out to us uh, if, you, if, if you're more interested there. Uh, but just to round out, um, uh, we also you know, have the ability to tag nodes. So if you wanted to uh, specify whether some feature or some input or source is you know PII or some particular team owns it or uh, whether it is part of a uh, you know golden set of you know things you want to easily include, you can annotate um, functions, and then one of the things you can do is that when you instantiate the driver, uh, you can actually ask questions of it, uh, and then get out say uh, so if you wanted uh, to more dynamically uh, you know generate an output based off of you know the tags that were in the code, this is what this example is doing. So. If you wanted to say this is the production you know feature set you could if one way uh without having to update your driver code is just to you know label um uh your code uh, uh, and then in the driver you can programmatically pull those labels out i'm wondering what if i already have uh, a bunch of um like traditional pandas code with uh, you know imperative style is there an easy way to convert it to hamilton to a functional way uh, yeah, you can ask ChatGPT. Uh, actually, so <laughs> um, does it work? Will it help? Uh, yeah, you it can. You can teach. It does work. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, oh. So yeah. So we have. Um, it's on the roadmap to, to at least try to figure out some ways that you can like, hey, uh, give, given a panda script, you know, uh, auto generate some Hamilton code uh, that corresponds to it. So definitely something that uh, you know people have asked asked about um, in questions. So definitely doable, but uh, just you know, not enough hours in the day to help help implement. How um, do you do this with, this with ChatGPT? So you show an example. So you take this thing from the document, the documentation, you like can, the first thing you showed, and it, then say, takes, hey, I want something similar. Yeah, right? It takes a bit of effort to teach it, um, but you'll tell it like, oh, like here's how Hamilton works. And then you'll ask it a few questions about the framework and it'll like kind of solidify that. And then you'll say like, here's an example of non-Hamilton code and Hamilton code. And then you say, here's some non-Hamilton code, convert it. Right, so you're using ChatGPT as a model too cool. like and you're like seeding it with a few different things uh but also as another way to convert it i think one of the way that we see people sort of onboard onto hamilton is start off small so it's easy to take one sort of small piece perhaps the like most complicated piece or some piece that you really want that's going to be read a bunch of times and convert that manually to hamilton and then you've got like one piece of your code in hamilton and the other not in hamilton right because hamilton is just sort of integrate you can like call the driver get a pandas data frame and then pass it to the rest of your code or whatever um, and then you see it like slowly taking over more and more of the code as people want to, like, as you have that one like kernel of Hamilton, then people want to rewrite the next piece. They start writing that in Hamilton and eventually like the whole thing gets to be Hamilton. So it's an iterative process. You don't want to be just migrating everything at once. So either you're starting a new project or you are like doing a migration or you're like, okay, I'm going to start piece by piece, uh, have the part that's not in Hamilton and the part that isn't Hamilton and then have it be like changing over time as you start making edits. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. How many people are working on this project? Just us two. Um, as the kind of core contributors, uh, we had you know have, have a few people contributed here, here and there, small things. Um, otherwise, yeah, for most of it, it's just been us two. Otherwise, yeah, we we, we have had contributors along uh, uh, a few from Stitch Fix, but also a few from um, you know outside once we open source them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if somebody wants to contribute something, how do they go about that? Yeah. Um, uh, so one is probably the easiest to join our Slack and ask <laughs> Elijah and myself, uh, hey, uh, is there anything interesting? Since um, we do try to curate, uh, you know, have, have issues in the repository that kind of say, you know, getting started, but those have been taken lately. 
Um, so definitely need to repopulate the uh, the issues with you know things that are, are good for good first issues. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, uh, talk to us so we can kind of understand uh, and get a feel for you know what you want, and therefore we can kind of help come up with a task that that fits. Um, There's a lot of cool directions to go in, so I think we could find something. If anybody here is interested in interested in contributing. So how to find your Slack? Is it in? Um, is there a link in the README? Yeah, yeah. So uh, A is go to Dagworks uh, in slash Hamilton. You can start the repo. If you scroll down a bit, we actually have you know a bunch of um, uh, 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 badges here, and one of them is join Hamilton Slack. Just click that; it'll take you to to Hamilton. Um, otherwise, you know you can follow us on Twitter as well. Tweet at us; um, more than happy to kind of help. How many people use Python three point eleven? I think it's is not too many people, but um, yeah, I think most are on. Well, we added support for it a few months ago. Most are on 3.10 these days, like 3.9 ah, or 3.10, okay. but every once in a while. 3.10 yeah. is the, the to-go version now because I'm still on the 3.9. Okay. <laughs> Do you plan to take part in Hacktoberfest this year? Uh, assuming schedule fits, yes, but I uh, haven't confirmed. <laughs> okay. Um, so what are your plans? What do you want to work on next? Yeah, so I'm super excited uh, with Hamilton since, you know, one, we're spending, devoting, you know, 100% of our time to it. So at Stitchfix, we couldn't, uh, but excited to start a company uh, to to kind of, you know, build around Hamilton. And so uh, there is a lot of things we could do and add to the roadmap. So uh, in terms of, you know, scaling out integrations, we could make, uh, you know, there's work there. Uh, we have a lot of people who use PySpark uh, and want a, a, an easier, better way to structure PySpark code. So there's a few directions we could do that to help make Hamilton kind of uh, help with that. Um, otherwise, there's in general, you know, the, the, there's always documentation and other things we can improve on. So we, um, so one of the, uh, you know, w w more than welcome kind of feedback to kind of uh, help set our roadmap. But otherwise, you know, we're looking at integrations with respect to like, um, um, you know, common MLOps tools that you want to integrate with, with your model pipeline. How can we easily, you know, bring in off the shelf integrations there to make that uh, easy to use? Otherwise, um, uh, yeah, how can we also better integrate with, with, with the SQL world a bit and, you know, offer a few things there uh, that will make, uh, you know, Ham using SQL and Hamilton also more ergonomic. So if you look at the 10,000 foot view, I think we want Hamilton to become the sort of unifying layer for data pipelines and machine learning where you can like delegate to all of these other frameworks as you need, right? And sort of plug and play and switch them out and execute it in different things, but it's all written in this common language. Mm, that's pretty cool. So last question. Uh, do you have any advice to anyone who's watching this? And since there are two of you, maybe each of you can share a piece of advice. Uh, so in terms of your, if you're a practitioner, um, definitely uh, I, I want to say, uh, the, the world is moving a lot, it's moving very, very quickly. Um, uh, the easiest is just getting your hands dirty and trying things out to really get a feel for them. Because I think um, uh, that's really, you know, where, where I ground my my understanding of things by writing code. Uh, and I want to say, you know, give Hamilton a try. Um, it, it will definitely push you away thinking in terms of, you know, uh, since, you know, individuals build models, but teams own them and you need different practices to make it work. In which case, you know, uh, I think, you know, trying things out is, is is generally the easiest way rather than, you know, it's very easy to read, read about things, but I think, uh, you know, uh, doing the 80-20 and actually trying to uh, get your hands dirty, it definitely helps, uh, I think, get you, uh, you know, to grok things a little bit more quickly in the data space. Yeah. Um, all right. So my piece of advice, I think open source is really fun and there's sort of this unique opportunity behind open source uh, that you don't get in the rest of the world where you can almost always communicate and talk to the owner of an open source library. So on the Hamilton Slack, we're there all the time. And even if you joins, I'm like thrilled. Like I want them to have the best experience. I'll like offer to like look at some of their code and hop on calls with them. Uh, but I don't think we're the only ones here. So you can really like get involved in an open source project reach out, meet people, and that can be like a really productive way of engaging and you can even sort of help move the project forward. So I would say like, don't be shy there, get involved. Open source is like the friendliest place to get started. Source is really cool, yeah. Okay, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for demoing the tool you're working on and uh, yeah, have fun working on this. Thanks, Alexi. Thanks for having us, Alexi. Yeah, nice to, nice to chat, thank you.